Hello, Pythonistas. Welcome to this week's edition of Python with Friends. Today, I want to take my time to go through a mini project. I just want to assume that my boss gave me a job in the office and he just said, can you do this for me? So what he did was, hypothetically speaking, he gave me the list of the top 10 football players in the world, the top 10 most expensive or highest paid football players in the world. He had a column with their names. He had a column with their ages. He had a column with the salaries they earn. And he had a column with the endorsements, how much they made from endorsements generally. And he said he wants to see their total earnings. He wants me to arrange it and create their total earnings by summing their salary and their endorsements. How would I do that with Python and Pandas from all we have learned? Is it possible to play around with it? I thought about it for a while and I decided to come up with this mini project. So without much ado, let's just hop onto our collab and see how we might want to approach that kind of scenario. New notebook here. I believe this is normal for most of us right now. If you've been going through the course as sequential as I've been delivering them, this will be normal. So what I'm doing we know how to do this. I'm just going to call it, um, let's say, mini project. Mini project. I don't see zero one. And we have seen this data before. All I did was to cut off a few things from it. And this is a data set we have. How might we go about doing this? So I'm gonna quickly run through what we had done prior. If you've been following this series, you would have seen everything I'm about to show you right now. So I'm just gonna run through. I don't have to explain everything the way that is happening. So let's start from somewhere. Hmm. The first thing I need to do is to import pandas as PD. Most people would actually prefer to import it before they even put the data, but I'll just go ahead. And PD dot data frame. Then we put bio data. It's gonna convert all of this into a data frame. There we go. We we have their names, we have their ages, and then we have their salary, we have their team, we have their country. So what my boss told me to do was to create a new column where the sum of this and this, you know, would equal to something. So 26 plus three should be equal to 29 million. I'm just having 10 here, but what if he gave me all the football players in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering how many could there be? I don't know. So I'm just trying to do what he asked me to do the best way I can, the best way I know how to. I know how to use Python. So that is what I'm gonna do. So here, what we did here was to create the data frame. So I'm going to make some arrangement arrangements based on the method of, um, chaining that I tried to introduce to all of us here. All right, so what I want to do, I want to set this 
name as the index, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna just come in here and then I'm gonna use this method here, set index. I'm gonna open my bracket here and I'm just gonna copy this. I don't want to make mistakes because Python is case sensitive. So if I make any mistake now, something else will be there and I'm gonna get an error. So I like copying and pasting. So this is what I've done. Now, the problem with this is it is not stored in memory or let's say I have to get a variable name and then this data frame, assign it to that. So, I mean, since this is the only project I'm doing, I don't think I should waste time. I'll just call it DF and use the equal sign here. Then if I come down here, I can put DF. So this DF, the reason why I put it here is that when I run the cell, it is going to display what I have just done so that I'll see if what I've done is correct. What I hope to see is the same data frame with this, the display. The name will have been moved to the index part where it is all the index labels now is going to be the name of the players, the 10 players I have. But this would equally work even if I had a, a thousand players or a million players, as long as the memory of my system can hold what I'm doing, this would work. So I'm going to just run this. And yeah, it's there. And the good thing now is I've stored it in memory using a variable name called DF. So I'm wondering what to do with this data. What he wants is he didn't like whoever did this job, hypothetically speaking. He didn't like what this person did. What he wants is a new column with their total earnings, summing the salary plus endorsements. We can see here that whoever did this, put salary and endorsements in one place, he refused to sum them up. So this is a bit of messy data. I'm sorry if you're working with real world data, this is how messy, messy they can get. So this is a bit of messy data. So you can see from this angle that that should be where his the salaries of each players were located. And then the second part is where the endorsements are, how much to make. I don't know whether it's endorsements every week, how much they earn weekly because the salaries are all about, you know, endorsement. The salaries are weekly salaries and the endorsements are probably weekly. I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna do a lot of things here. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna say DF. I think I'm gonna do a lot of things. So I'm, I'm gonna change. So I'm going to open it like this first then put my df now come down here you just the best that's, that's just the way i like doing it because it allows me to work step by step so if i can just run this cell what i'm seeing here what i am seeing here is that column that contains the salaries and endorsements. And I'm wondering, what can I do with that? Hmm. Okay. I could take a step back and do some transformations. Let's see, df.dtypes. I want to see what is contained. I know what they are, but it's good to just check them. If you see salary endorsements, you can see it's an object. If I want to do any mathematical operation. I can't do with strings because these are obviously strings. And this is just 10. I could have just picked my calculator and just punched them and then create a, a, a column in Excel. But that wouldn't be easy if I had like a thousand entries, even a hundred, even 50, even 10 is going to waste my time. If I can just write something, a code, I'll just do that for me automatically. That means anytime he brings similar things to me, I could just run the code again and in five, 10 minutes, I'm done. I'm handing over my 
my, my work to him. So coding can make your life easier. So I've seen this now and I'm wondering how do I proceed? Hmm? What I can do is I can get rid of these symbols because if I want to do some mathematical operations, if I want to perform some mathematical operations, I don't think Python would know what to do with that symbol. Excel might, but Python doesn't want it. So I need to get rid of that. After getting rid of that, and I, I need to also change this M. I know this M means million, but I need to put in numbers so that when I'm summing it, Python knows it's dealing with millions. And then let's see the output I can get. Bear with me for a bit. So to do that in Pandas, I would uh, use this. Uh, let's see, am I replacing? Yes, I think I need to replace that with nothing. So I just replace and I open bracket here and I put the symbol I want to replace and I want to replace it with nothing. So let me run and see. Uh, I think it worked. You can see that the dollar sign is missing from everywhere here. Dollar signs are missing, right? These dollar signs are, are not there anymore. Look at them in the original data frame. Dollar signs are here, but here we have gotten rid of them. Now we're having a problem here. Uh, it says, hmm, the default value of regex will change from must be wrong. From true to false in a future version. In addition, single character regular expression will not be treated as. It's just telling me there's a bit of an error here. I mean, the, the code is working. So because I'm getting this error, I think what I need to do is regex equals to false. Probably wouldn't stop me with that again. Yep, no more warning signs. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of these M's. So I could just copy this like that and drop it here. You can see stage by stage. And I want to replace M with nothing. So if I run it, bravo. Oh, uh, how do I do it? How do, instead of replacing M with nothing, I could replace M with thousand, three of these, that makes it a million. Good. Uh, could just get rid of this. I just wanted to see the thousand separator so that I don't make mistakes. That's why I'm putting that. So I replace it. And here we go. Wow, I think I'm liking how our stuff is going. What else can I do? Uh, maybe I should try and expand it into two different columns into a new data frame. I think that would make it great. And I'll split from this, from this side. Let's see, another string operator, string dot split. Uh, comma. Uh, is that? Yeah. Let's see, what, what does it give me? It's good to be worked. Aha, we have a list now. It's forming to a list. But I think there's another function to, to make it split into two cells, I mean, two columns in a data frame. So I just put comma. I think it's expand. I've worked with this before, so I know the codes by heart. If you don't know, you have to check. 
Yes. Uh, so this is a data frame. It has expanded. Mm. And I think the last thing we need to do is we need to change it to an integer. Remember, it's, it's still a string. That's what we're playing. We're putting this SGR here because we're dealing with strings. So I need to change it into an integer. Yes. Um, yep. So I think this would work. Yeah, I think so. So the next thing I need to do is I need to assign them to the data frame that we're dealing with. Remember that our data frame is called DF. So if I do df.columns, I'll see all the columns in the data frame we're dealing with. Age, salary, endorsements, team, and country. Now I want to add a, I want to add two new columns called salary, one call salary, one call endorsements. And the quickest way to do is to just assign everything I've done here because we have two columns here. This so these columns here, you can see the names are still there. And we also have zero and one no name. So we're going to attach this to our DF. Okay. So how do we do that? It's a very simple method. Sorry. Like doing the lazy way. So you open this and and what do we call the first one? I mean, I can call it whatever I want. I'm just gonna assign them. I'm gonna call this one salary because the first one here, definitely salary, this is the endorsement. So I'm gonna put them in a list, the two new columns I want to create. One I'm gonna call salary. The other one I'm going to call endorsements. So I can actually just copy from here. Drop it here. Then here I will put an equal sign. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, and I'm just making it a bit wide so they can see. So here I'm gonna put an equal sign. So what happens at this, everything I've done here will be assigned to the two new columns that I've just created, everything I've done here. So this would be the, sal the column for salary. This would be the column for endorsements to be assigned on the main data frame because what we have here is not on the main data frame yet. So let me just show you. This is the columns. These are the old columns we have. And you can see. That's the old columns that we've always had. The age, the salary endorsements, the team, and then the country. Now, I have just created two new columns, salary and endorsements. That is what this expanded. It expanded it into two different columns. And now I'm going to assign them onto the old data frame so that when I print that, you're going to see it. So what I have to do now is to go down here and print DF. So I'm going to run this so that when it assigns it, it will print it for me to see today. It will display it for me to see. And here we go. You can see that we have two extra columns that we just created. And what I can do is to run this DF columns underneath that so that we can see the difference in the columns. We have age, age, salary endorsement, salary endorsements, right? We have team, team. Country, country, then there's a salary here. Salary that is not there. And we have endorsements here. Endorsements are not here. So that means we have successfully created 
two new columns and I've attached it to our old data frame. Uh, are we done? I think we are. To an extent, we need to now have total earnings. I think we need to do that. But before we go that way, we need to just check to see what we have in our data set. This is an object, salary, it's an object, that means it's a string, literally. Uh, the sal uh, salary endorsements, yes? Sorry, the new column we created containing the salary is an int, an integer. And the new column, the other new column we created, we created called endorsements is also an integer. We did that from strings. We broke the string, deleted the dollar sign, the M we converted to zero. Then we used the dot as, as type int to convert everything to int, right? And here we are. We could have used float, but I didn't see any, that's my point in the number. That was why I stopped to, to using integer. So we have integer values here. Uh, so we, I want, uh, we, we have to create a new column called total earnings. And the value in there is going to be the value of the salary plus the value of the endorsements will give you total earnings. Yep, that is how we're gonna do it. Uh, yeah, I could just get rid of this guy. So uh, we're gonna create a new column total earnings. And because it is only one column, we use only one set of square brackets. For this one, we use two because there was more than one column we're trying to create. So that's why we have to put two. If it's only one, we don't need to put two sets of square brackets. But if it's more than one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten we need to put two sets of square brackets. If you don't know what we're talking about, I will just highlight it here so that you can see. You can see there are two here. There are two here. And the reason why we have it is because we have two sets of columns that we created newly. Remember when we're doing that. All right. So here is one we're dealing with. So. How do we go about that? This will be equal to DF salary, sorry. Yeah, it was giving me a hint, huh? It was giving me a hint, sorry. Let me just go back and use the hint it was giving me. It's easier to work with the hints. Uh, salary, let me put S. The hints refused to come out. I was angry. I didn't use it the next the last time. And then I'm going to add, since they're integers, I can add them. If they were strings, it's going to give me something else. DF. Let me wait for it in case. Yep, we see it's happy. Endorsements. So what am I going to do? I'm going to print everything so that you see that I have it. I've, I'm going to create a new column again called total earnings. So I'm going to print everything and you're going to see it. It has worked, I believe. This is it. This is a new one we just created here. It's here. I think my work is done. There's really not too much. I can present this to my boss and he'll be happy I've done it, especially if the entries are many. I couldn't be doing it one by one. But there's something else I just want to do. I want to make it to look more attractive to, to my boss. Right? Um, but before I do that, I want to I want to get rid of these two 
Yeah, I mean, I could, I could leave it. Should I leave it? Should I get rid of it? Should I leave it? Should I get rid of it? Okay, let me get rid of this. I want to just present something very nice to my boss. So let me get rid of that. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of this, this column, the one that has the strings. I'm sorry if my boss calls me back and say, no, put them back. I just want them the way they are. But just right now, I feel that it's best for me to get rid of it. So I'm gonna use a function, function called df dot drop. Then, um, yep. I'm getting some type hints here. In case I forget what I'm supposed to do. Uh, columns. Yep, that's it. It's the type hints I have are coming in handy. So how many columns do I want to dress? I mean, do I want to drop? I just want to drop salary endorsements. Salary hyphen endorsements. And as usual, I have to put them in quotation marks. And then I have to make sure that I do it in place. If not, if I don't do it in place, if I run it like this, it's going to drop it. It will print it but it won't be stored in memory, right? You can see it's not here anymore. But if I go and do DF again, see it's still here. It wasn't here when I ran that code because it's what that code just did was to show me what it was gonna do. But if I wanted to permanently do it, there are two ways to do it. Either I say DF equals to that, then when I run it, it will be permanently stored in the data frame we have, or let's say the variable name we call DF. But I sort of prefer to say in place, prefer to do it in place, it does it permanently. So I have to put in place here. You can try it and call it in place true. Then when I run it, it's not gonna display anything. I have to verify by running the DF to see what I have. I can see it's permanently gone. So I have done that. And my boss only wanted me to do this. Create a new column where this value is there. But I want my boss to be able to see to easily read it as if it was Excel because he didn't ask me to use Python, I'm using Python. I wanted to be able to go through it and mm, okay, this is nice, right? And how am I gonna do that? I want to put the dollar signs back on it, but I want to use M. I'll put commas instead. And there's a nifty code I got from some somebody and I'm just gonna add it here then explain what I think the code is doing, right? Played around with it in the night first before I decided to run with it. So what are these codes telling us? What it is saying is that go to the column. If you remember how we used to subset columns in pandas, we still do the same. Go to the column that has total earnings. This is a column here. This is our data frame. Put a dollar sign in front here. At the same time, on the dollar on the total earnings separate the numbers with a comma, comma, comma. Yeah, sorry, English, with a comma so that you can easily see whether it's a thousand, 10,000, 100,000 or a million. And then I'm asking it to add two decimal points because we're dealing with money. It's like an accounting ledger. So we need to add those two decimal points. 
I mean, is it decimal points? One decimal point and two significant figures, I think, or two decimal places. Decimal places. My math is getting old. We're doing the same thing. for endorsements, the dollar sign will be added in front and this function here is gonna add a comma after three zeros like this, a comma will appear there. And at the end of each of this, there'll be the symbol of two decimal places dot zero zero, just two. Same with salary, salary, same with them. All right. So all I just need to do is to run this code. I found it from, what is Stack Overflow? I can't remember. I just asked myself, how do I, I just typed, I just Googled it. How do I add commas and is it thousand separators? in pandas and I kept searching and I found this code. I just copied it shamelessly and understanding what the code was saying it, that it was going to do. I just adjusted the names of my columns appropriately and I ran it and it worked. And that's why I'm confidently sharing it with you. And then what I'm gonna do below here is to print everything out. So I'm gonna run, hoping there'll be no errors. I think I copied and it's everything exactly the way it should be copied and voila, it has executed. Salary, 26 million. Endorsements, 3 million. Three plus 26 is 29 million, right? Good. And you can go up and down. And I think if I was to submit this to my boss, my boss will be very, very, very happy with me because now he can read it. He checks Eden Hazard and he will see, okay, yeah, salary and endorsements, total. Garrett Bale, like that, total. And this is a very presentable way to hand over this work assignment to my boss. If he says, oh, change that, I just go back oh, and change it. But at least I try to exceed what he asked me to do. So this is just a mini project and I hope you like it. Play around with it. I'll advise you to go through the video one by one and copy the text and type out the codes by hand. As I'm doing it, write it out yourself. It will make you to get used to working with some of these codes. Sometimes you have to do them over and over again. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, please hit the like button and subscribe so that you can get more videos like this. Thank you. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you for watching this video and I wish you happy coding everyone. Ciao.